let us first begin by trying to understand what globalization means in the context of the environment. Ordinarily, we think of globalization in the context of economic reform and along with a very closely related concept called liberalization. However, it is important to note that when we consider the global environment, then globalization has a completely different meaning. Globalization in the context of the environment is a process by which there is commonness across the entire globe. That is an embryonic integration of the whole world. Global environmental concerns were born out of the recognition that ecological processes do not always respect national boundaries and that environmental problems often have impacts beyond borders, most often globally. Thus, the environment is concerned as the common, considered as the common heritage of mankind. So, when we talk about globalization in the context of the environment, it is this commonness that we are talking about. Any damage to the environment in any part of the world affects the whole globe. Climate change, stratospheric ozone depletion, biodiversity loss are planetary problems that require global cooperation and management because by now it should be clear that globalization in the context of the environment means the global concerns about the environment. After studying this module, you should be able to learn their linkage between globalization and climate change. You would know about the meaning and causes of ozone layer depletion and understand the impact of melting polar caps amongst other things. Now let us move on to the discussion about the natural and anthropogenic factors that lead to climate change. When we say anthropogenic, it implies the impact of the human race, whereas there are certain natural changes which take place on their own. The earth is a dynamic sphere, so it is related to the planet's climate. The climate of the earth is known by the long term trend of the worldwide weather conditions. Scientists have put together a print of the earth's climate that dates several thousand years in the past. By examining a number of indirect processes of climate such as glaciers length, ice cores, ocean sediments, tree rings, pollen remains and variations in the earth's orbit around the sun. Climate changes in the prior to the industrial revolution in the 1700s can be explained by natural causes. Research shows that natural causes are not likely to elucidate the warming that has observed particularly warming ever since the mid of the 20th century. However, human actions can possibly account for most of that warming. The earth's temperature depends upon the balance between the energy entering and leaving the planet's system. When the earth system absorbs the incoming energy from the sun, 
the earth warms up while the earth shuns warming when the energy that comes from the sun is reflected back into the space earth cools out after the energy is released back into the space the causes of climate change is often very debatable and complicated however there is a strong verification that natural causes like changes in the output from the sun alone cannot explain our changing climate instead it is increasingly believed that lifestyles and the activities of the human population on the earth are constantly causing such changes and such damage to the earth's atmosphere climate change refers to any significant change in the measure of the climate lasting for extended periods of time it comprises significantly of changes in the temperature wind patterns precipitation amidst other impacts that happen over numerous decades or even longer periods the rise in the temperature alone is not indicative of climate change indeed in some places fall in the temperatures has also been witnessed the greenhouse effect is a natural process that warms the surface of the earth as the sun's radiation reach the earth's atmosphere a small portion is reflected back into space and the remaining is absorbed and re-radiated by these greenhouse gases the earth receives energy in the form of sunlight from the sun and the earth's surface heats up while the while absorbing some of this energy this is exactly why the surface of a road is hot even after sunset due to the absorption of a lot of the sun's energy earth cools off by giving out energy known as infrared radiation however before this radiation flights to the outer space the greenhouse gases present in the atmosphere absorb a part of it turning the atmosphere to become warmer hence the warming of the atmosphere also makes the earth surface warmer this is a cycle which keeps continuing day in and day out and as a result there is global warming global warming is an increase in the average surface temperature of the earth due to the result of greenhouse gases for instance the emissions from carbon dioxide by the burning of fossil fuels or due to deforestation the heat that escapes from the earth is actually entrapped and it actually does not get out into the outer space the sun bombards the earth with massive amounts of radiation which uh, leads to a warming of the earth's atmosphere and what happens is that there is a range of radiation in the form of infrared and ultraviolet light and other types of radiation which are not perceptible to the human eye now let us study the average global temperatures since the beginning of the last century agt which is the average global temperature has risen by 0.5 to 0.75 of a degree uh, over the upcoming decades and the world uh, could see worse than this and it could be possible that the average global temperature grows up to 4 degrees while some regions of the world experiencing temperature uh, which has increased even to the tune of 16 degrees as per the intergovernmental panel on climate change a continued increase at the current rates would raise the average global air 
in the atmosphere by between 1 to 3.5 percent by 2100 which is not very far going by the history of the planet. The average rate of warming is likely to be greater than seen any time in the past maybe in more than 10,000 years in the past. The impact of climate change will not be uniform over the globe. Economic globalization is accentuating the problem of climate change. It is the most intimidating problem that has ever been encountered. A 5.8 degree temperature rise has been predicted by IPCC during the 21st century. This prediction is not based on an inclusive approach of considering faulty development models and global trade leading to a destruction of local vegetation and tropical forest. 600 billion tons of carbon are contained in these forests which is equal to the present atmospheric content of carbon and much of this carbon if released in the coming decades due to global logging activities will aggravate the ongoing climate change. The IPCC also does not consider the damage that is being done to the world's soil due to industrial agriculture led by export oriented practices. The world's 25 percent of the world's carbon dioxide, 80 percent of nitrous oxide and 60 percent of methane is now attributed to agriculture. 1600 billion tons of carbon which is double the quantum of the present in the atmosphere is contained in the world's soil and in a few decades this would be released into the atmosphere if we do not quickly change the practices of or towards organic agriculture that is to have local and sustainable resource use. Moving on to the discussion of intensified environmental problems, we have the major problems that we have are climate change and loss of biodiversity. Globalization has resulted in increased consumption of products resulting in an increase in production of goods that have adversely affected the ecological cycle and hence they exist a stress on the environmental resources. Earlier people used to consume food growing locally but with globalization the consumption of foreign products have increased manifold. Trade growth has accelerated and because of this there has been a depletion of non-renewable resources such as minerals, oil and so on. Increasing levels of consumption necessitating the increase in the production of goods in turn stresses the environment via the carbon footprint. The major mode of transport that has characterized globalization in the past has been the uh, aviation. Aviation is a mode of tourism and transportation and it is a high emitter of greenhouse gases. It significantly contributes uh, greenhouse emissions from aviation has increased from 1990 to 2004 to the tune of about 86 percent. Its contribution warming is around 4 to 9 percent. So, while sea transport accounts for 2 to 4 percent of all the fossil fuels being consumed by the planet each year and 95 percent of the trade to, that is directed is towards the US and it, it goes through the sea route while 70 percent of the international transport of goods towards the EU uh, also go through the sea route. Improvement in energy technologies 
are not adequate to absorb the environmental consequences of a 3% increase in shipping per year. Humans, plants and animal diseases spread faster through the increased movement of people and goods around the globe due to the increasing trade that is taking place around the globe. There are ways of protecting the environment from globalization of the kind that is taking place in the past few decades. The companies that are responsible for produ producing tons of greenhouse gas every month have switched to have to switch to the use of gentler and less harmful alternative sources of energy such as solar power wind power to promote sustainability the replacement of fossil fuels is also on the agenda of these companies even though these substitutes are slow to develop in our enormous and enormously globalized world. Many wind farms, hydroelectric plants developed in Alberta have revealed the potential to a clean alternative source of energy. Alternative energy sources like solar power has enormous potential but they are high priced. Therefore, the prices however are of course dropping slowly as they are being adopted across the world. So, it is important to ensure that such alternative sources of power become affordable and are adopted by people across the world. The use of alternative sources of energy is likely to lessen the negative impact of globalization on the association between occupants of the world and their environment. Now, we will try to understand what is meant by ozone layer depletion and try to look at the causes of depletion of the ozone layer. A deep layer of gases in the upper atmosphere of the earth named the stratosphere, uh, it exists which encloses the entire globe naturally from the radiation which comes from the outer space. The lower regions of the stratosphere contains a higher concentration of ozone and it is found to be 15 to 20 kilometers above the earth's surface. The average concentration being 0 0.6 parts per million. The ozone layer, it, but the thickness varies as per the geography and as per the seasons. In the tropics, the highest concentration of ozone occurs at the altitude of 26 to 28 kilometers while at the poles it is much narrower and lower. So therefore it is between 12 to 20 kilometers. Ozone molecules have an essential property to block the solar radiation from reaching the earth's surface. As we have earlier discussed, when the radiation from the sun reaches the earth's surface, then it warms up the earth's surface. Now to obstruct the wavelength which is harmful, uh, it is necessary that this ozone layer be retained. The ozone layer absorbs something like 97 to 99 percent of the harmful ultraviolet rays which are emitted by the sun. If the ozone layer had not been there, then human beings would be suffering from deadly diseases like skin cancer, cataract and also weakened immune system. Plants as well would face the flip side of the otherwise welcome sunshine and plants would yield of such plants would also reduce. Animals would also have a negative impact if the ozone layer 
were not to do its job of protecting the surface of the earth. And if this were to happen, that is, if the ozone layer were to deplete, then as a consequence, we have what we are experiencing today, the most important, the most difficult problem of global warming. The damage to the ozone at present was recognized in 1974. Uh, natural causes have accounted for 1 to 2 percent depletion of the ozone layer, but the effect is uh, temporary. It is also believed that major volcanic eruptions also led to the ozone layer depletion. Man-made ozone layer depleting substances which, is, which are known as ODS such as chlorofluorocarbons that is CFCs used in the in air conditioners and cooling equipments in hospital equipments and freezers are the main culprit which are responsible for the depletion of the ozone layer. Some other chemicals also have a similar impact uh, such as methyl bromide which is used as a pesticide and methyl chloroform is used for vapor de degreasing, cold cleansing and some aerosols and adhesives and chemical processing. All of these chemicals and emissions which are added to the atmosphere are responsible for depletion of the ozone layer. Obviously, these are all man-made compounds and this is what we mean by anthropogenic effects, that is the effect of human beings on the atmosphere. The potency of the ozone depleting substances is quite uh, damaging. It is true that the oceans and the volcanoes re release a large amount of chlorine but it is easily dissolved in the water and rain washes it out from the atmosphere. But the problem is that man-made ozone depleting substances are not washed out in the form of rain on the earth or destroyed by some other natural reactions. The natural emissions do not break down the atmospheric uh, ozone, but the man-made chemicals remain in the atmospheric layers from between 20 to 120 years. So the natural effects are temporary, but the anthropogenic effects are permanent. Consequently, due to their relative stability, these chlorofluorocarbons are transported into the stratosphere where they finally break down uh, the ultraviolet rays and dis they discharge what is called free chlorine. The free chlorine actively involves in the process of ozone layer depletion and this reduces the ozone layer and does damage to the earth's atmosphere. Prominent reduction in the stratospheric ozone has taken place. There has been a slow and continuous ozone diminution of 4% uh, in 10 years of the earth's stratosphere since 1970. The ozone depletion has been more severe in the polar regions where we had said that the layer of the stratosphere is much thinner. The, this is an annual happening uh, as the seasons change and what is happening is that every year the ozone layer at the poles is becoming thinner and thinner and this is known as the ozone hole. The mid-latitudes that is 
around Australia, the thinning is uh, 5 to 9 percent. The ozone layer has notably thinned over regions of Antarctica and uh, it is more so in the spring season. This has led to the formation of an ozone hole which happens annually between September and November over Antarctica. Nonetheless, the Arctic zone depletion is poorly understood at present. It makes it difficult to estimate the risk of future ozone holes. The late winter intermittently visits uh, uh, such a problem and the severity of the ozone layer depletion in these holes can be up to even 40 percent but it normally lasts for a few days covering a few hundred kilometers in diameter. The chemistry and the air movement provides two explanations. It has been possible to distinguish between two different types of arctic zone holes. One type is primarily caused by the same chemical mechanism as the Antarctica and the other is primarily by changes in circulation. Ozone layer depletion leads to an increase in the ultraviolet radiation that is damaging the living cells. This increases the in the Arctic because of the reflective snow cover. In most important long term, the most important long term effects on the Arctic ecosystem may be seen as changes in the species composition. That means it affects the biodiversity, it affects the not only human life but the flora and fauna. In regard to climate change, stratospheric ozone depletion and ultraviolet radiation, there is a need for more basic research and monitoring to understand the process better. Now let us consider the international policies for ozone protection. The Montreal Protocol uh, an international agreement was signed in 1987. The signatory nations committed to reduce the use of CFCs and other ODS. The international community decided to gradually discontinue the production of CFCs and other such substances. Under the ambit of the protocol, a fund was to be created to help underdeveloped countries to explore other methods of production in order to stop the use of CFCs. Uh, ever since there has been a consensus at the international level and this consensus is with regard to the causes and effects of ozone layer depletion. So this, uh, there is an organization World Meteorological Organization and, and along with the United Nations Environmental Program, they are coming out with a periodic report on the science of ozone layer depletion and it is issued by the scientific community. Numerous regulatory programs are designed and coordinated by EPA support to the whole campaign against ozone layer depletion. Since EPA is active in developing protection policies for the ozone at the international level, individuals of course could also help by making the technicians working on refrigeration equipment and air conditioning so that they these equipments could be certified by the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA. Even with the adoption of these efforts, it might take another 100 years for all these destructive substances to fade away from the atmosphere and the ozone layer to return to its normal state. Some research findings would be in place. It has been found that 
between the years of 1850 and 2005, the rise in the global average temperature has been uh, to the tune of 0.76 centigrade and during the last 50 years, the rate of warming up has nearly doubled and the warming at the poles has actually gone up more than two to three times the global average and this is clearly related to the presence of the ozone uh, hole at the polar caps. Uh, the rise in the temperature has an enormous effect. The rise in temperature of even half degree can have a great effect on the weather system and the planet in general. For instance, the sea level has risen 15 to 20 centimeters in the last 100 years as noted by the US EPA. Uh, and as a result of this, there have been massive, there has been a massive melting of the floating icebergs and more significantly, there has been a disturbing trend towards the melting of the polar ice caps which have been there for a millennium. The melting of the Arctic and the secondary Antarctic and the uh, Greenland ice shields is occurring at a faster rate than it was forecasted by the IPCC. And this is a extremely disturbing phenomenon. The rise in the average temperature in the Arctic regions is twice as fast as somewhere else in the world. The thinning and melting and rupturing of the Arctic ice is very worrying. Melting of Ward Hunt ice shelf, the largest and single big block of ice in the Arctic has been, which has been in existence for more than 3000 years, has started cracking in the year 2000. And over the past few years, it is breaking, has been breaking up into pieces. And at the polar caps, sometimes the ice has been shrinking at a very alarming rate. The climate experts suggest that during the peak of the last major intergalactic period, the, uh, it, the Arctic was free of summertime ice which was about 1,25,000 years ago. Uh, today the global average temperatures are moving close to the maximum seen during this uh, age old period. Similarly, carbon dioxide above the uppermost level in this period and the impact of global warming on the cryosphere and the polar caps is quite complex. The impact of such a breakup of these huge icebergs known as Larsen's ice shelves stretches beyond the poles resulting in an impact which is far reaching for the entire globe. The warming itself accentuates accelerated warming. For instance, the loss of uh, sea ice decreases albedo and alters the ability of the ocean to absorb the heat and carbon dioxide. The increased flows from the ice sheet that result in the increase in the sea level is worsened by some other phenomenon which are all precipitated due to human activity. Hence, the climate change is something which is affecting the globe vitally. Now let us look at the impact of the melting polar ice caps. The melting of the land-based ice sheets and glaciers adds to the rising level of the sea which threatens coastal areas. It would lead to a contamination of the supply of fresh water. However, the sea level remains unaffected when the floating ice on the sea melts. Island nations such as Maldives and cities such as Shanghai, Lagos whose inhabited 
regions are merely less than 6 feet above the sea level are at great risk. The native people, plants and animals are already affected due to the melting of the permanent ice. The freshwater lakes enclosed by the Ward Hunt ice shelf drained into the oceans with a distinctive ecosystem when the shelf was fractured. Along the coastlines of the Arctic, there is a looming danger of entire villages being uprooted and swamped. It is increasingly difficult to, for the native communities and to hunt for their daily food which are whales, seals, walruses and so on because of the melting of the polar ice caps. They feel threatened and move out of the region and this threat also leads to the uh, threat which uh, would destroy the cultural identity of these people who are living near the polar caps.